Welcome back to episode 99 of the Disorganized Wizard Club podcast. My name is Alex, and here as always with Adam. Hello. And Cam. Hey. And we're a group of auto-based players that play just about anything and everything we can qualify for. We talk about decks, tournament stories, just about anything to help you and ourselves get better at magic. 99, wow we 99 episodes. That's a lot of episodes. And for 99 episodes going strong, we've been sponsored here by the Wizard's Tower here in Ottawa. <laughs> nice. Great sponsor of this podcast, your source for magic single needs, wizardtower.com. You can also... F- support us now patreon.com slash dwc podcast uh being a patron gives you access to our dwc discord as well as we have some other little bonuses you can get um some yeah. stretch goals it's uh, been a cool little community we've started yeah you can discord there check out all the different kind of things going on on the patreon for all the different patrons it's been cool having a lot of different discord Conversations in the channel, lots of chat, lots of speculation coming up with rotation. Speaking of patrons and fans of the show, I've heard that Jay-Z has been a loyal fan and no longer has any problems due to our podcast. <laughs> what? 99. Yeah, he had 99 problems, but this is episode 99. Oh. <laughs> we solved them. We solved them one at a time. Yikes, that was really cheesy. Oh, jeez. I thought it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no nah, it's been cool it's been a lot of fun just talking about sort of like we had a pretty long discussion last night on the math behind um something we were just talking about before we hit record which was the do you bring into spells versus mono green math class knowing that for sure they're boarding in for nature's claim as the although black. curtis was like oh they bring in like what two to three he's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay <Curtis. laughs> they're bringing in all four <laughs> but yeah and we kind of had a discussion about you know whether you would because our the story is our friend LP got got blown out by yeah shout out to LP made uh, top four of the no. Syracuse class Syracuse classic the Sunday tournament I believe it, it is was top four yeah top four sweet top four playing uh, yeah hardened scales affinity and lost his top four match to a blue white control player because his nature's claims got dispelled yeah <laughs> in games two and three and so yeah it provoked a discussion in the Discord about sort of the math behind the decision whether it was a dead card worth it versus other dead cards. Yeah, it was cool. It's it's just cool to have those kind of discussions on there where people are sort of deciding on the percentages of outs versus a dead card. So yeah, yeah, Discord channel pretty sweet. It's a informative place, you know. Yeah, definitely. We got a lot to talk about this week. Busy week. Uh, this is as always we do before every set release. We do a top ten episode for our, the cards we're most excited for going in, and uh, we have a sweet little list here put together. Uh, but to kick things off. Did any of you guys play Magic this past week? No, we both had a horrible schedule. Yeah, I've been pretty busy uh, with like, it's about the time that the first assignments in a semester are like starting to be due. So I've yep. been uh, <laughs> doing that. Real working jobs. Uh, I went to play Sealed. How miserable. Uh, M19 Sealed. And it had been a while since I played that format, uh, you know, like in Sealed instead of Draft. And I forgot how miserable it is to try and beat green creatures in Sealed. <laughs> Yeah, it's sealed. Not an easy time. Tough, eh? Just played against Vine Mare twice, had no hope. <laughs> of course. Played against another deck that had like a bunch of bombs that like bent over backwards to like win game two, but like couldn't do anything in games uh, one and three. Rough life, man. Yeah, yeah didn't even, it wasn't didn't the even best top eight. sealed format. <laughs> I'm just shocked at how different it's sealed in draft format is. Yeah, draft's great. Yeah. Wow. Well. Normally, they're not like this large of a disparity between them, but yeah, it happens though. Because I, I mean, I think at the end, we both thought Amiket and Hour were pretty bad sealed formats at the end because there was only like one deck. Mm-hmm. But draft, we were like, oh, you know, you can do different things and it's pretty yeah, interesting. But the sealed format, there was only one deck, just five color pile or get out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But in draft, you could play the crazy blue red deck. You could five color pile if you wanted. You could play zombies. Like there were lots of options, but in sealed, there was only one. Yeah. But yeah. Bunch of tournaments this weekend besides SCG. Friend and former guest of the show as well, Dan Lanthia. Shout outs who top eighted the Open at Syracuse, the modern yeah. Open. Coming off his top four at Grand Prix Detroit. Um, yeah, he's on a tear. Yeah, top top eighted the uh, the SCG Open, playing blue light control again. He messaged me on Facebook. He was like, come out of retirement with me. Come to GP Montreal. Because like he, I hadn't been playing much in yeah. the last year just out of being comically poor. Yeah. And now I have a job again. I was like, yeah, eh, okay. So I just responded <laughs> like that too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll go to Montreal. <laughs> yeah, we're already we already going. we had already planned <laughs> yeah. on going. But it's just like, Speaking yeah. of that, I need to we need to figure out where we're staying. Yeah, we'll figure, figure out, out an plans. Airbnb. Yeah, we're gonna have a meetup too. Uh, speaking of the the patrons and the Discord, we're gonna meet up with everybody if they're around. We'll hang out, you know. So yeah, 
Oh, I have Discord on. I have Discord on my phone, so I see all the messages. So I, yeah. I'm like, yeah, we can just hang out with everybody at the thing. I think we should have like a DWC pub meetup. Oh after. man, yeah, that'd be fun, right? Oh, Let's like, do that. Play inside events. There's nothing I gotta wake up for on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just on like a Saturday, like DWC yeah. pub night. Yeah, right. I think it'd be fun. Just get yeah, everyone out for sure. Have Let's them. do it. I don't know. Yeah, we should. I'm do in. It. Yeah. All right, you heard it here first. All right. Come hang out with us in Montreal. We can but call well, it the Scrub Out only Pub if, Out. Only if you're <laughs> <laughs> Scrub Out Pub Out. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be a patron to figure out where we're going, though. You guys just message us on Discord. <laughs> yeah, or Facebook. Yeah, or or whatever. Twitter. Yeah, I'm sure you'll track us down. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. So, uh, uh, talking about the GPs a little bit. Uh, GP Stockholm won by Band Spirits. Andre Strasky top aided. Was it GP Prague a few weeks ago yeah. playing Band Spirits? Yep. and. Took down this one, ran it back band again. Yeah. yeah, a lot of those guys think they said they think that Bad Spirits is the best deck in the format. It's a lot better than I thought it was. Yeah. I didn't think much of it at first. I just thought it was a worse humans, but it does create pressure in different ways and sort of lets you play a different sideboard package, which I think is a huge deal. Right yeah, now. you got you got access to the best sideboard cards, and that I humans think, just doesn't get access. Yeah, to. and you really abuse Phantasmal Image, like being able to give all your stuff hexproof with a Drogsol Captain yeah. is like huge game. Yeah, it's massive. Just yeah. shutting down all spot removal. Yeah, yeah. it's it's really powerful. Because a lot of times you'll see meddling mage just naming spot removal sometimes anyway, right? Whereas this just doesn't need to do that. Yeah. So it's true. yeah, a lot a lot more yeah. powerful. And then champion of GP Hong Kong, everybody's favorite uh, <laughs> <laughs> crew, Tron, Karn and the Boys. Yeah, take, take it, it down. down another tournament. I mean, I just the deck is so good and it I I think people are finally sort of realizing that they should just play it at real events. Man, deck's great. I Life's great. I've been winning tournaments. reading some online forums uh, and people's opinion during spoiler season. And I disagree that people think that they want to start playing Tron or that it should exist. <laughs> yeah, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Okay, so I actually have, I was talking about this with Kurt. It was something he thought it was a different deck. I was talking with a friend and I was like, is there a deck? And then he cut me off before I could say it, but... I was basically asking, you know, is there a deck that every single spoiler season, everyone goes, oh, finally, this is going to kill that deck, right? And he, I think he said, like, Storm. I was like, no, Tron. Yeah, it's Tron. It's Tron. Every time a new card is spoiled, people are like, oh, God, these Tron players finally. And then Tron just, like, <laughs> is just gets, you know, gets Sanctum banned or whatever. Not Sanctum. Uh, I have Ugin. I have Ugin banned and then just gets better in the tier as a deck. Like, it's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're new wacky card that goes in your tier four deck is not stopping tron i'm sorry like it this happens every spoiler season ah finally an answer to tron yeah, alpine moon out here just ranching <laughs> stopping tron from oh man dampening spheres you're gonna just kill tron yeah, finally just single-handedly just out here stopping tron from winning gp hong kong oh wait <laughs> right like how many cards in the last set have printed and people are like that's it that's the death of Tron. Like even like Ben Freo had that like what's that really bad card like Unmoored Ego or whatever. Unmoored Ego was that oh, from Gills Rapid. Yeah, on the yeah. SCG article he wrote, he's yeah. like, "Well, it's better than you think." Like it knocks out Tron. <laughs> I was like, "Oh boy," <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, "Not again!" <laughs> like how do people fall for this trap every time? Like you just started laughing when people like talked yeah. about some of the other cards. You just laughed. Yeah. You're like, I, "You if you think Tron cares about these cards, you're out of your mind." Like you just don't understand the deck. Yeah, we'll get to it. But I mean, I'm no, going to rant just, a bit. That's just but. that's just every every spoiler season. It's some card yeah. is just the death of Tron, and it just the death of Tron is always greatly exaggerated. <laughs> you can't stop that thing. Very true. Very. They got to ban. The, they have to ban the lands. Yeah. Unle yeah. Unless you're banning a Tron piece, you're not killing that deck. Yeah. Sorry to tell you. Because they're not banning Karn. They're no. not banning a seven mana planeswalker. God no. Right. So you like you either ban the Tron pieces or you ban the otherwise you're not because you still have to draw that sideboard card. They get yeah. a game one. Like it's just I don't know. Banning Ancient Stirrings would do a hell of a lot to take the deck down. I agree with that. You could you could also do that. I still the think deck, the deck is very good. The deck would be good, but it's so much less consistent. Yes. And okay. it, it already What would they play in a replacement is that? I don't even know. I haven't even bothered to think about it because <laughs> why would I? <laughs> <laughs> Smart. <laughs> yeah, just from a thought experiment, I don't even know what you'd really play. I don't I'm know. sure there's ways Tron could adjust very easily, though. Yeah, just that's... because the base power is in the Tron lands, not. Yeah, you probably you're forced to probably play some other Sylvan Scrying effect, maybe. Yeah, aren't or... there similar like one mana green? Look at the top however many, and they take like a creature or land, not colorless. So yeah, maybe yeah. you have to play more worm coils or something. So but... you're playing Oath of Nis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, let's again, you cast your Karn with any what's color. What's Adventurous mana? Impulse get? Does it get any land or a basic land? Any land? Any land, I think. 
Danny Land. Yeah, I guess you could do that. That feels kind of bad. That though. feels really bad. There's probably yeah. just better options among like going two colors even or something. You know yeah. what I mean? There's just way better options. But yeah. yeah, whatever. Anyway, we'll cross that bridge if we ever have to. <laughs> but you in the meantime, you won't. Gonna keep mogging people. <laughs> 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 All right. So we have our top 10 list this time around. Uh, starting at number 10, we won't make this mistake again, Cam. We're not starting at number 10. We are starting at number no, 10. No, we're starting at number 11. We're starting at number 11. <laughs> <laughs> number 11 on our top 10 list of cards. In uh, Guilds of Ravnica. In which Guilds of Ravnica. I actually did. So I was something embarrassed before we get into this. It's like two days. Or last night was it? I was looking on my phone at spoilers. Mm-hmm. And I was like, went to go search Google the name for spoilers. And I typed in Return to Return to Ravnica. Because <laughs> I forgot. I just thought that's what it was called until last Return. night. And I was like, wait, there's no way that's the real name. But that's what we've been calling it. Everyone's been calling ourselves. It. Yeah. So I just typed in Return to the Return to Ravnica. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> there's no way that's... A, so I just went to Mythic Spoiler instead. And they all came up. I was like, oh yeah, Guilt. Guilt to Ravnica. Someone okay. was joking that like the... Villain in the next set is going to be like the guilds band together to defeat the Eldrazi again, and it's going to be shadows over return to return to Ravnica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then Ball shows up in the next set. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, got it all timed out. Yeah, but anyway, sorry. So number eleven on our top ten list because we felt it would be unfair not to talk about this card is Assassin's Trophy. But on the record, I'm not excited about it. Neither also, am I. we don't really have removal on our top 10 list because that's just not sweet. Yeah. yeah. It's boring. Like it's, it's like obvious that like the white convoke enchantment will see play. Yeah. Conclave or, Tribunal is very good and it's going to see a whole lot of play. But, yeah. I mean, if things line up for it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just all certain cards, you know, we don't have to say, Oh, Hey, fatal push is awesome. Yeah. I don't know. We kind of wanted to focus on cards that are sweet and cool and new and like re- removal spells are fine, but well, you know what they do. Yeah. This one's on here though because everyone else would put it in their top ten. Yeah, yeah. There's this has been the, I think the card that has sparked the most discussion during the spoiler season. Yeah, with the vast majority of opinions I've read favoring it. Well, Man. the one thing it for sure will do is kill Tron. <laughs> yeah, they just can't survive. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Oh man! So for those who don't, I, okay, dude, what does this card do? Just so we can, it costs two mana, green black. Destroy target permanent. Its controller can go get a basic land and put it into play. Tapped or untapped? Untapped. Holy boy. That's a big yikes. Untapped. But <laughs> instant. It's an, an instant. instant. Card yeah. kills yeah. everything. Kills your Urza lands, guys. A, 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 permanent. Tron. Destroy permanent. Holy shit. You know, shit. because the really close matchup between the Jund and Junk and Green Black decks, you know, they were just barely losing to Tron. <laughs> <laughs> they just needed this card to push them over the edge and now they can never lose to what was before a 50-50 matchup <laughs> you know, like, I just don't understand like thinking oh man the people that think this card is gonna make the play like Jund decks playable again in modern because they can finally be Tron or uh I'm not going to call them what I think they actually are, but they're not smart people. <laughs> <laughs> How did this, like, is this even enough to help them beat Blue White? Like, I'm not even convinced. You know what I mean? Is this better than Thoughtseize, which is probably one of the best things against, like, I'm just, I, I don't know, man. I'm not really into giving my Blue White opponent A, stuff in their graveyard for their search for this Kanta, because it doesn't exile, it destroys. Why don't mm-hmm. you just kill their search for this Kanta? <laughs> oh, wait, playing- you mean I'm going to ramp them into their turn four Jace? Well... Yeah, that or, sounds like a good idea. Or they're Teferi. Or yeah. just activating colonnades and or doing other things. killing you with colonnade. Uh, yeah, like, I just... Also, is it better than a Broke Decay? Uh, anyway. It doesn't really... This card... So... I think this card's good. The card, the card is good. It's going to see play. It's nowhere near as good as everyone thinks it is. Isn't it like $25? Like, it's like 30 or it's more. It's like over $30 right now. That's... There's no way it's that... Do you remember like the last time... When we were at Ravnica, do you remember what the card that was thirty dollars was ordering for? Do you remember that card? Was it the red Cam- white one? Yeah, I forget what it's called. Some Wait, fury. Which one? Aurelius Fury. Aurelius Fury. <laughs> <laughs> well, that card was nuts. Yeah, thirty dollar card at pre order. Man, I don't know. About what did that it end one. at? Like four? I don't know, it's probably a fifty cent rare right now. Yeah, it has to be. The card never saw play in any format under any circumstances. Yeah. So like, I'm not saying that this will see play. Don't get me wrong. This card does not solve any of. John's issues when it comes to playing against Tron. Because, sure, okay, you're going to kill a Tron land, 
you're just going to give them a basic. How does this card help you beat Worm Coil Engine? Which is the card in the matchup you can't beat. Yeah, you add. Does it. Karn? Fine. For Ulamog, John you're dying Black? anyway, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Worm Coil Engine is the card John, Tron, uh, John has the hardest time beating. Yeah. Like John has you don't, a, if you don't think so, you do not understand the matchup at all. Yeah, like Abzan has a chance, but they also just lose to everything else too. Yeah. Like Abzan has the best matchup against Tron because you can answer a Worm Coil Engine yeah. with no downside. With Path. But this thing doesn't fix worm coil it doesn't no. solve the worm coil problem you're still gonna die to a worm coil engine yep even if i would cast it on turn six you're still you're gonna lose you lose on the spot yeah <laughs> that's how it works like you're yeah, the- i've played jund versus tron a lot i've played a lot of jund you just lose on the spot like yeah. i've you know i've won a match here and there against tron but it's miserable and i got so lucky and they got unlucky like that's all that happens the matchup is not close yeah, and all the tron decks are playing four or five basics now so you're, it's not like you're running them out of basics with this card. Right. Ever. And yeah, just killing a land, sure, okay, I'm going to kill their turn two Tron piece, and then they have a, they have a basic, and then you're just going to keep doing your thing. All your, all your deck is built around is getting in, lands into play. So also, even what if are you, you taking turn three off, I suppose, because turn, like you go Thoughtseize, go if this. So you're taking your turn three off. What if they just have it on turn four anyway? Their whole deck just finds Tron pieces. Yeah. You just are dead anyway. You're just delaying the inevitable. I don't think that this lets you kill them fast enough in no. the meantime. Even if you're taking turn two off to kill well, a Tron you never land, take turn like, two off. Oh, if you're on if the you draw, take, you have to. Yeah, but what you're just still not pressuring them at all. They're just going to cast a turn six Worm Claw Engine and kill you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're on the draw, you kind of have to, right? Yeah. So what you're saying is on the draw, they have to cast this on turn two. Mm-hmm. So that means they have no pressure. So it doesn't matter that they blew up your Tron land because you'll keep playing a game and eventually just hard cast your things without even assembling Tron. Mm-hmm. And on the play, they're not fast enough to clock you. No. They have to cast this on turn three, not turn two, because they need to have Dark Confidant or Tarmogoyf They need to play two. something on turn two, yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, they can delay you by a turn or two, but eventually, you know what I mean? It turn, just, it's not enough. It's not enough pressure, I agree. No. Yeah, I don't think this card, this is just another in the long list of meme cards that are like, I'm gonna, this is the death of Tron. It's like, <laughs> Man, you just don't understand the matchup. Like, you're not understanding. Like, I realize that you want Jun to be good because, like, mid-range decks are sweet and it's cool to have them be good. Mm -hmm. But also, what does this solve for the broader mid-range problem of modern? In that modern mid-range decks aren't good right now in modern. It's the prisoner's dilemma. I think we were talking about this once and we mentioned bringing it up on the podcast, but we never did. So the prisoner's dilemma is, if you're not familiar with it, two people are in two separate cells and they each get a very weak sentence if they don't rat on each other. If one rats on the other, then that person gets no sentence, and the other one is entirely punished. But if they each rat on the other at the same time, then they both get the most harsh sentence. And it's a game theoretic thing that your best play to make sure you don't get taken advantage of is to rat regardless, which is what's happening in modern. It would be more fun if everyone could agree to play (laughs) mid-range mirrors, but you can take advantage of anyone playing a mid-range mirror by playing an unfair deck, so everyone has to play unfair decks, and no one enjoys playing the, like any of the unfair mirrors. <laughs> well said. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, it's modern is held hostage by the sort of turbo-linear decks, you know, and blue-white is is able to counteract and play against those, but, like, I just don't know where Jun gets its piece of pie here, even with a card like this. I just don't think this card's good enough. And in standard, you can't cast this card early. You can't. No. You just can't. No. You if I'm not killing something that costs four four or greater, I'm never casting this card. Right, what are you going to cast it against aggro? You're no. just like what if they were like what if they were mana screwed? Now that you're just dead. You just yeah. lost on the spot. Yeah. And like I've had this discussion with a number of people and they say, "Oh, well that's fine. It's there for their large bombs. I'll just wait." But now you have a card in your deck that you have spent a draw step putting into your hand that you are unwilling to cast for the next two or three turns. So you are forcibly mulliganing yourself every time you draw this card early. I think it's probably fine in standard as a one or two of. I yeah. think maybe... Depending on how the metagame shapes yeah, up. Yeah, like, like I will not be surprised. I think it would be fine if this is a one or two of sideboard. That's currently where I think it is. Four decks that like... Or for matchups where the green-black rock decks just actually can't answer something efficiently. Sure, bring it in. Maybe that ends up being one or two main, but I don't see it ever being more than that. I yeah. just think it's crazy that like Willie Idol post, you know, and that guy's like a Jund or Brock master, right? Mm-hmm. And he posts like early thoughts, like this is for sure just a four of, you know, in all the Grok decks. And it's like, I hope that's an early thought. Because <laughs> <laughs> your, your later thought should be, 
hmm, maybe I'll play a real deck. Yeah, oops, misread the card. <laughs> <laughs> no, your, your later thought is definitely, I should not play these decks. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people in Standard are going to trick themselves into playing multiple copies of this card to start. It's going to be entirely it's not overplayed. that good. And yeah. then slowly switch up their removal speed. And it'll go, go down to like one or two copies. I, I don't know, though. I could see a world right now where you, you don't really have options. And this is just the best option for yeah. removal. Yeah, maybe for like the next couple formats. Right, I could see that happening. I'm like, I'm saying I can see a world where this is really good, but I, I just don't... Yeah, I, I just think that... Even if it ends up being good, people will think it's good for the wrong reasons. They'll miss, uh, misevaluate like the downside. They'll underestimate the downside. And I also think that due to it seeing like too much play early, people are going to misattribute losses uh, to something else when it was actually this card early game that killed them. Wait, can I read this again? There's just no way you get it untapped. That's wild. Yeah. It yeah. kills anything, man. You have to give it to them untapped, right? Because it kills lands, yeah. 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 Yeah, um, I don't know. Cards. We've talked long enough about this crappy number eleven card. We I don't know. It's on. not crappy though. It's just not as. Yeah, I don't know. It's not how everyone seems to be reading it. Well, no, I don't even. I just can't tell. Honestly, I just will tell you, it's not killing Tron. <laughs> like, that's all I'm for sure. <laughs> well, I'm just for we sure. We can saying agree that. there. Yeah, that's yeah. We can definitely agree on that one. All right. Finally, on to our list. Number ten, Dream Eater. Four yeah. UU, four three Flying Flash. When Dream Eater. Eater enters the battlefield, surveil four. When you do, you may return target non land permanents and opponent controls to its owner's hand. This card's sweet. It's a lot of text. I wish it returned to uh, any permanent, not just non land. It's six mana. Come on, just let it, let it bounce lands. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can undo the damage you did with your assassin's trophy. Exactly. <laughs> That's the one two punch. <laughs> Man, this card is sweet. And this card is I don't awesome. know that it for sure sees play, and we discussed this quite. I think it'll see play, and I think a lot of people are kind of falling into the trap right now that they're just comparing it to Torrential Gearhawk. Oh, yeah, that's dumb. And It's nothing similar. Yeah, but people are doing it because it's a six-mana blue flash threat. Yeah. Uh, I think this card's really... I don't know if control decks want this kind of card, but I think, you know, blue mid-range decks will I think blue, it's want more it. likely in blue mid-range decks, and yeah. it's something we discussed quite a bit before we started recording, which was three toughness is just... Yeah, three toughness is a beating. It's just um, like the green, uh, the control decks can't afford to have it game one because lightning strikes aren't going anywhere in game one. Yeah, in your control deck, and then they're just going to this, and that's just too much. And bouncing isn't good enough versus the decks that are also playing lightning strike. They don't care about getting their stuff bounced. But in mid range decks where you're trying to grind out value, this is perfect. This is the kind of creature you want. Yeah. I mean, I also did say that like the difference in Torrential Gearhulk and why this is nothing similar is that six toughness lets you block anything, basically. Yeah. And Torrential Gearhulk was just a thick boy. This is a really good value creature, but it doesn't have the stabilizing power. Right, exactly. Like surveil bounce is not the same as Vraska's Contempt block. Right. That like, can just claw you back into a game instantly. Like kill your five five, kill your seven seven. Yeah. It's basically what Torrential Gearhulk did. Like you can't the le you can't compare that the power level on torrential gear hook but having said that like yeah people shouldn't compare them at all this card's completely different although to be fair i said also that if this card was a four five instead of a four three we might be looking at the best card in standard mm -hmm. the best yeah. creature in standard it would be too good at four five so i don't know alex said four four would have been better i think and i agree yeah not dying to lightning strike would make this much higher on our list I really want to bring this back with an Eldest Reborn. Being able to being it, oh yeah, <laughs> being able to block uh, a Chain Whirler would be nice. Yeah, with for my six mana um, mythic blue creature. You guys aren't just playing. You know this. what I mean? I can't yeah. block their three mana red goblin. No, like, you just, oh, that card needs to be banned though, Adam. So oh, uh, we, yeah. I don't think we. My should literal that. nightmare sphinx can't beat this dumb gobbo. <laughs> I mean, clearly you just put this card as a four of into mono blue flying men with favorable wins. Now you got a five four. <laughs> There we go. But, uh, Problem solved. Definitely a sweet card. Yeah, I really like this card. I don't know how it lines up, but... I, I'm going to try and make it work. It's sweet. It's a cool card. Like, it does a lot. You know what I mean? It's a, That's a lot of text mm -hmm. like yeah. on, on it, you know? Yeah. Surveil 4, I, I think that's really good. Surveil 4 is nuts. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. going to be cool. A lot I'm, of in, I'm very excited to try this card out. I think it's sweet. Stone Cold sweet card. Guess A plus on the sweet department. Definitely. How are you giving people cavities? Moving on. Number nine. Yuck. Oh, am I supposed to say it? Sure. <laughs> okay. This is Vraska, Golgari Queen. Uh, one of the new Planeswalkers. She costs four mana, two black green. Uh, she starts at four loyalty. Her plus two is you sacrifice another permanent, and if you do, you gain a life and draw a card. Minus three is abrupt decay something. 
destroy target online permanent CMC3 or less. And I haven't read minus nine. Uh, you get an emblem with whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. That's, you know, pretty powerful. Losing yeah. the game is a pretty good... <laughs> All your creatures are just mechanic. infinity X's <laughs> outside of creature combat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think this card is very cool. We're kind of seeing Planeswalker designs now since the core set walkers came out. They're a lot more, like, dialed in, I guess. I do like that. I really like yeah. that about the design, that it isn't the what, unfortunately, Ralz Eric is in this set, which yeah. is plus one draws a card, minus, like, kind of deals with a creature or something, and then all kind of wins the game. That's yeah. the, like... But they're a lot yeah. more limited because they force you in a certain ar- archetype. Like, this is better. This yeah. doesn't do that. Well, Ralz Eric still kind of forces you into a blue red, yeah. you know, spell focused type deck. Whereas this, this obviously, very obviously, a graveyard kind of deck. Um, I do like that the Planeswalkers are becoming more of this, where they're no longer just the generic, you know, yeah. Obnix model. The Obnix less model, yeah. 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 Um, but I, I think this card's really cool. I definitely want to play it alongside Stitcher Supplier and Friends. I um, think this, yeah. Yeah. I think that it's fine. I don't know. I'm nervous about having to sacrifice permanence to draw a card, but I don't know. Like that really makes me nervous. I think the downside well, for- is so high. It forces you to build around it, right? Yeah, but having said that, sack outlets can sometimes actually just be better than yeah. not, right? Like this could actually be end up more powerful that you get to sacrifice something. It just depends yeah. on mm-hmm. are we playing the one mana one one the one it dies or are we, what one yeah. enablers are we playing? And if yeah. this has the build around to make it good, then it's absurd. Yeah. Um I'm definitely yeah. Another card that I'm I've been trying I'm gonna try and make work. Uh, it's been a lot of the lists I've been kind of brewing up early on. I think it's cool, fun build around, and I'm really interested to see how it works out. Um, and then moving on to a card that will probably be played a lot In alongside the same deck. <laughs> number eight. Uh yeah, the glow spore sham and just a green and a black for a three one. Uh, when Glowspore Shaman enters the battlefield, you put the top three cards of your library in your graveyard, and you hit a land card from your graveyard on top of your library. So I wanted all I wanted, and it's a three one, yeah. All I wanted from the set was Grizzly Salvage. Can't blame you. And they gave me this. I want Wayfinder, but I'll settle. I'll settle for this. I think this card's quite good. Yes. I wish the land went into your hand instead of on top of your library. Yeah. But I mean, hey, you can keep two landers with this card, no question, on the play, and yeah. not even be worried. Yep. Yeah. This just, is just a Dryad Green Seeker Womble combo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is a wombo combo. Holy. Oh, broke it. But uh, three power for the two drop is is good because, you know, against decks without a lot of creatures or blocks early, like this can get in there. It enables graveyards. And it definitely it's... puts a lot more pressure on your opponent than the Seder Wayfinder did. Yeah. Damn right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. which was a two meta one one, right? And being a three one, like, it likely trades with whatever it's attacking into. And you don't care if this dies because of the types of deck you're playing. Right, so, it's already done its job, yeah. which was mill yourself. If this is mill removal spell in combat, like, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, really sweet enabler. Going to play it along Vraska and Stitcher Supplier for sure. Um, we didn't quite get Grizzly Salvage, but I will settle for this. Yeah, it's and, not as good. You know, Elf is a I just saw the comment type. on this card, and I, like, almost, I, I almost had an aneurysm. Somebody was like... Worse, sorry, man. Seder Wayfinder was beyond garbage. Okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just a four of and like so many tier one standard decks, but all right. Yeah, God, Seder people Wayfinder are nuts was... on the internet. <laughs> yeah, Seder Wayfinder garbage. Just a, one of the best commons in the set. <laughs> like a ritual of spoiler season is named after that card. Yeah. Yeah, the Wayfinder. Yeah, Seder, Seder, Wayf- Seder, Seder Wayfinder. Wayfinder. Yeah. 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 When he posts all his new brews. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Number seven, Azoni Thousand Eyed. We got a lot of green black cards. A in lot a row. of green black cards. There, I think we know what at kind the of top decks end like of the building. list. Yeah, our bottom end is actually not a lot of green black. That's true. And during the ones and twos, we yeah. Well, well this one two B B G G, uh, two three elf shaman. <laughs> no, it wasn't a good game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, legendary creature uh, undergrowth. When Izoni enters the battlefield, create a one one black and green insect creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. And you can play a, pay a black and a green to sacrifice another creature, gain one life, draw a card. So we weren't sure. I'm still not sure. But A, you ever re- reanimate this creature if there ends up being like another Liliana-style Planeswalker or something, right? Because she's rotating out um, five mana one. But I mean, if there's yeah. any convenient ways to just sort of reanimate this card. Eldest Reborn. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the good. New, that's a Planeswalker, uh, right? What's the, uh, the new one? Connive slash Concoct. Yeah, Connive yeah. Concoct. I mean... 
at what point, like we talked about this before the podcast, how many creatures do you need in your graveyard for this to just be un, unbelievably power, like a, and just an insurmountable board presence on turn six? I think five creatures is insane. Four creatures is very good. Three is mediocre. Right. Three is good. Yeah. I'll, I'll take three. Yeah. Six mana for four bodies, five power, six toughness. Yeah. It's not bad for six mana, like, especially it, when I get to chump them one turn and then start drawing cards off them. Yeah. Pretty good. You're just, it's kind of Ishkana at that point, right? Three tokens. Yeah, it's real good. Yeah. doesn't have reach, which is a beating, but... Yeah, obviously the tokens are Yeah, it just good, depends but... on but flying might not even end up mattering in this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but... This is also the type of card that if you are playing a grindy mirror or if even you're not playing, like you're playing aggro versus a black-green deck and the game starts to go late, you have to fade this draw step for the rest of the game. Yeah. If they... If the game has gone past turn 10 and there's seven, eight creatures in the graveyard, maybe more because they've been milling themselves they have what 20 cards left in library like this is just going to be one of the best top decks in standard yeah you have to fade it yeah or you just lose on spot you just lose like you have to be like yeah they cast this and they make what 15 power and now what and can you're top decking their deck if they want you're top decking like a creature yeah i think the cards are really good yeah six mana is the only issue you know what i mean if it wasn't if it was five mana we were talking about Again, one of the better cards in standard, but five mana is probably too good. I, I, yeah, I don't know about too good, but it's very good. Maybe too good. I agree. Maybe too good. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Like Ishkana was five, right? Yep. Yeah. Whew. Man, that card was wild. Yeah. But yeah, no, this card is it's not as powerful as Ishkana, so I'm like I'm not sure. But again, it's in a set where you just need creatures in your graveyard. You don't need Delirium. There's not deck building costs with Delirium, right? You can mm -hmm. just have creatures be in your bin. Just which play creatures. We're just playing Golgari anyway, so. Yep. Yeah, I think it's a cool card. Yeah. All right, moving on. Number six. Uh, yeah, so switching off of green-black to the other potentially most powerful guild in this set, Selesnya, we have Amara, Soul of the Accord. Uh, two mana, two, two. She costs a green and a white. And whenever she becomes tapped, you create a one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink. If it had to attack, I would tell you this card was trash. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> but the fact that she just taps is, I mean, we're going to... When you use it to convoke anything... Right, we're going to convoke set. I mean... It makes another mana dork because your decks all convoke things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially when that white removal spell, the enchantment that has convoke... Yeah. Conclave you know, you can just, yeah. Just having... You know, imagine this was only an enchantment that said, you know... Whenever you convoke, make a 1-1 one, one with lifelink. I don't think you'd play that, but when it comes on a body, that's pretty good, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty strong. I think there's a lot of potential here. It's if there's a way to pay off making use of all these tokens, right? There's so many token generators in this set, and you just got to find a way to build it. The minute yeah. you find a way to build it, yeah. the minute it's, you find a way to take advantage of the fact that you're playing a bunch of tokens, you got it. I mean, it plays really well along with Shauna, Sissy's legacy. Yeah, Shauna's, yeah, Shauna's crazy. Yeah, Good thing vehicles are going. Wait. There's still some vehicles. There's in still line. some vehicles. Yeah. Oh. Weatherlight. Oh. Yeah. Wait, what doesn't Weatherlight find her too? Yep. And Shauna? Yep. Mm. Oh, that card's bad, but <laughs> 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 we got a brew coming, baby. <laughs> the, the the old DWC deck dump coming soon. Don't worry. We'll be testing. Yeah. But yeah, no, like this plus vehicles, you know. Would have been good. Yeah. I mean, there's potential that some of the vehicles that are still around are playable, maybe. If this, if that is what they're finding, right? If they're able to find Shauna and this mm -hmm. and other kind of green-white historic cards, that's potential. And, like, there's the obvious payoffs for making a bunch of tokens in cards like Benelish Marshall or Radiant Destiny. Yeah. Yeah. But as people start experimenting with deck building, there's probably something else, some other weird way to take advantage of having so many things. Yeah, Shauna's definitely going to be a big one, like. Yeah, yeah, there's lots. Yeah. Card's cool. Did we talk about Shauna, right, on our last episode of cards that were... Yeah, we definitely did. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. I don't remember. We definitely did. Of cards that were... Didn't see play but will, you know, from the older sets. We definitely, I think we did. Yeah, yeah, we definitely did. Yeah. Anyway, keeping on the green green card train. <laughs> green cards. Uh, also an elf. District guide. Yeah, this card's pretty good. It's just Borderland Ranger, basically, except that it finds a gate. So it's except a, it's infinitely better. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a green and and two colorless for a two two. And when District Guide enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land or a gate card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Yep. Uh, Borderland Ranger was a card that saw a decent amount of play, quite a bit of play among a bunch of mid range decks during its 
time and standard. Um, the fact that this finds a gate early on while we're missing the other guild's mana, I think this is a card that gets worse as the format gets older and more sets come in and more lands come in. But I think early on, this is going to be what enables the sort of longer grindy mid-range decks to exist. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question about this card in Limited. How highly would you value this in like pack one, pick one? Very high. Because it feels like the type of card that is a justifiable pack one, pick one, because it then lets you take any other good, uncommon or rare in any color. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, like if the if the rare isn't good, yeah, you know, if the rare is bad, this is a pretty high pick in my opinion, especially because it's Ravnica. You want to be playing multicolored cards, and this mm -hmm. lets you cast your spells. And casting your spells is sweet. I do enjoy <laughs> casting my spells. One of the easier way to win games. <laughs> yeah, confirmed one of the best ways to win magic is to be able to cast your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of green decks are going to play this card. Uh, very good in a lot of strategies. Not much else to say about it. Borderland Ranger was a very good card. It's standard. just a safe card to build your deck around early in the metagame as well, you know? Yeah. It blocks, it's consistent, it makes your deck consistent. I think eventually it's a card that gets shaved out, but early on it's going to be one of the essential building blocks of any mid-range deck. For sure. For sure. Moving up, still on the green elf train, <laughs> Pelt Collector. God, this card nuts. One mana, G, for an elf warrior, 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Gee. Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector's, put a plus one, plus one counter on Pelt Collector. As long as Pelt Collector has three or more plus one, plus one counters on it, it has Trample. This card's silly. Yeah, it's really good. Experiment 1 was a really good card. Yeah. You ain't wrong. This card is disgustingly good. It's very strong. In Mono Green Stompy. I completely Stompy, missed that it triggers once things die, too. Yeah. It's yeah. The first good. time I read it. In Mono Green Stompy, if they play this on turn one, I don't see them missing a turn where it gets a trigger for the next three to four turns. So this is like a one mana, five, five, four, four. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, it can get out of control really fast. Yeah. I mean, it's not hard. And there's already a lot of creatures that do it because... We discussed this, right? It checks on resolution. Uh, yeah, I believe it's like an intervening if. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So even a Jade Light Ranger can pump it up if it's a three, because it could explore become uh, a four three. No, I don't think it'll trigger it when it enters because it's less power then. Right. Okay. So they don't get it. It was like because we were talking about gruesome menagerie. Oh yeah, and that was a weird was. interaction where like you could, if you brought back a pelt collector, say. And a oh, Jade Light right. Ranger yeah, and, and two Jade Light Rangers. That's the intervening if club for it. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. then they trigger when it enters. The first one makes it a two two, but then because you've stacked your triggers, the thing that triggered it, which wouldn't have, is now bigger and will. But yeah, it's like a corner case. Yeah, it only works with gruesome menagerie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, yeah, Jade Light Ranger won't trigger it, which kind of sucks, but I mean, I don't think that's the issue here because you're just stomping people with you're just playing Steel Leafs and you're all just high playing Steel Leafs until it's a four power guy. Yeah. Well, this doesn't trigger every time a creature enters the battlefield, doesn't it? And then checks upon resolution if its power is greater. I believe no. The intervening, I think, if I remember the rules correctly, the intervening if clause like that, it checks, uh, like it doesn't trigger if the creature is too small, but then it also checks afterwards. So, like if it got, yeah. if it got shrunk in the meantime, it would fizzle. So it won't trigger. If, like, let's say it's already a two power thing and I play yeah. a Jade Light Ranger, it yeah. just sees it as the same. So it won't trigger and then check on resolution okay. because Jade Light Ranger entered is the same power as it. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's I'm, how that works. Yeah, I think so too, but yeah. let us know if we're wrong. We need a judge. There could be, for the first time, an error on the show. Because I think it's a lot <laughs> like Toolcraft Exemplar. There's no trigger if you don't have an artifact. If you do have an artifact, it triggers and then it checks again if you have an artifact when it resolves. And yeah. it's worded the same way yeah. at the beginning of combat. If yeah, you control this, an artifact, then... But then wouldn't it... I don't know. They're both timing clauses at the beginning of combat and whenever another creature. And then the if modifies if that timing clause matters. Yeah, but isn't whenever another creature just means... No. Like it would always trigger? No. Because the if changes it. The if changes it, the way it's worded. Mm. There's like a whole section of the rules about this, intervening if clauses. Oh, magic's hard. <laughs> Basically impossible. Just call judge. Reading is hard, yeah. guys. Just it went in doubt, call judge and let them get it wrong and then blame them for it forever later. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me. But no, this card nuts. This card is really yep. powerful. It's the one drop that can just be huge. Yep. This, this card not like just so powerful. <laughs> yeah. Moving up. Number three. Is this another green card? 
Oh, it's a green lot of, white card. A lot of green oh, cards on this list. Yeah. I wonder what colors we I didn't think they'd <laughs> reprint Sphinx's Revelation. <laughs> but here we are. But here we are. <laughs> okay, this card is not Sphinx's Revelation. Well, yeah, no, all the cards you draw are 1-1 one, one creatures instead of maybe lands. It's close. <laughs> <laughs> Nuts. So this <laughs> is... <laughs> if you haven't figured it out from context clues, we're talking about March of the Multitudes. Uh, it costs X, green, white, white. It's an instant with Convoke. Uh, and you create X, 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. Yeah, it's kind of sort of a secure. It's a lot of soldiers. The waste style finisher, mm-hmm. but with convoke, so you can really pop off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they chain together a lot better than secure the waste did. Yeah, the life link is huge. It's just massive. for it gives it like, just as we were talking about when we were discussing Dream Eater, that a few changes to the toughness really change the stabilizing power of a card. These creatures having life link gives this a lot of stabilizing power. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I think this card is so powerful because. It can sort of go in the on a more aggressively slanted deck as a top end way to convoke out a you know a powerful attack. I mean, it can go in mid range decks, and it can be a control finisher. I mean, secure the waste was a control finisher. There's no reason mm-hmm. this can't right. So help stabilize, help win the game. This yeah, does a lot. It's instant speed. That's huge. Yeah, we've seen the Bant Fog deck already be a control shell playing green, and they could easily take advantage of something like this. Yeah, I mean, Bant Control's been a thing in past Ravnica formats and other standard formats as well. It's I mean. Green green decks have been control decks in the past, so it wouldn't be surprising to see that be the case here. Yeah. Especially because white is the primary color on it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this card's very powerful. I yeah, think, that, I, I'm actually surprised how cheap it was pre-ordering at because I think this card's very good. That green can be the splash. Helps you, as I mentioned, play cards like Benelish Marshall or whatever else. Man, I I love the top comment to this. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Who would win? An army devo- of devout followers of the Conclave trained and ready to die for their cause versus one whirly boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's great. But it's instant speed. Get it after they play the whirly boy. Uh, exactly. Are there any flicker effects? How can we bounce this chain whirler at instant speed? <laughs> release, sure. to, release to the wind. Ooh. Oh, yeah. There you go. Ooh. I'm surprised Game. with all with all these like one one token creating cards. I'm surprised that they didn't print a card that costs three. Like, is it? Is it? Is it? First strike flash with chain builder text. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Not a lot of strong is it cards. I feel like on our list for. Uh... Are there any? Constructed. So I actually had a thought about this. Okay, well, no, there is. It's just we didn't put it on our top 10 because it's not sweet. Oh, yeah. The reprint of Dissolve. Oh, yeah. That's that's a Demir card, actually. It's got Surveil. You're right, my bad. bad. (laughs) That house doesn't exist, but... Yeah, the three mana counter a spell and Surveil 1. That card is just going to be a four of every... We just, just, like, our top 10 list isn't, oh, these are the cards that are... Yeah, we have some honorable mentions. Standard. We'll get to them in the honorable mentions. but. But I think is it... Kind of got like, so some people I was listening to uh, that now that this full spoiler came out said that red looked pretty weak in this limited format. It's somewhat hard to tell without playing a bunch of games, but I think in general, like the is it mechanic is inherently weaker than all the other guilds mechanics. Yeah, like people jump. get excited about jumpstart, but I think they too readily compare it to flashback, which was the previous Ravnica. No, that was Innistrad, but they compare it to flashback, but like it doesn't draw you another card. All it does is like slightly modify your draw steps. It's good flood protection, but it just lets you play eight of a card. And if a card's not good on the front side, playing eight won't make it good. Yeah, that was my argument about the jumpstart cards was they have to be good on the front side to be playable because you have to assume the only reason you want to play them is late game. You're dumping extra lands into them, right? So that means it, it, the, that's not that good. You're not getting a huge card advantage thing out of that. You have to make it to late game. So the front side has to be good enough that it's worth playing early. And a lot of them are... Yeah, and I've been underwhelmed with the jumpstart cards. Yeah. I think the draw two one's probably going to see play, but... Yeah, Chemistry is inside, I think, is fine, because I do think control decks are going to want a four-mana draw two. Um, I mean, maybe. The other one might be better. Notion Rain or whatever. Notion Rain. Yeah. Okay. That card's really good. I think that, yeah. It depends how aggressive the format is, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Obviously, no, all things in context. But. Notion Rain, by the way, is the uh, sort of pseudo read the bones reprint. The better read the bones. It's like yeah, a blue yeah. black three mana sorcery. Surveil. Surveil's uh, really. Yeah, Surveil to draw two, lose two. It's very good. Yeah. Putting stuff in the bin, obviously superior. Love doing that. Love putting stuff in the trash. Yeah. Taking it out and putting it in the trash. <laughs> I'm about it. Maybe take something out of the trash later. Throw it at my opponent, though. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? 
But yeah, Mars and Multitude's a sweet card, powerful, has lots of flexibility, just strong. Yeah. Speaking of strong. <laughs> you want to read this card? You yeah. love this card. Eh? It is one Aurelia, thick lady. Yeah, Aurelia, Exemplar of Justice. Uh, just so it's she costs two colorless, a red and a white for a two five flyer with uh, mentor, which is the new mechanic. Um, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose up to one target creature you control until end of turn. That creature gets plus two plus zero oh, and trample if it's red, and gains vigilance if it's white. So just on her own, I mean, we're looking at a four five vigilant trampling flyer for four. That's pumping your other creatures. That can also just sit back and pump other creatures and send them in instead. No, I this, mean, like, she pumps herself to be a 4-5, then attacks and pumps other things because she has Mentor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild. Yeah. No, I know. This card does a lot. Um, also, if you don't, like, she doesn't have haste, but she kind of, two power of it does yeah. because she gives another creature trample plus two plus oh if they're red. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a card, though, that doesn't even really need to use the Mentor text to be powerful. Just a four mana, four, five vigilant flyer is enough to see play on its own. They always get plus two plus oh, right? And then tramples linked to red and vigilance linked to white. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I, miss, I misspoke on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's nuts. Like all your white creatures get plus two plus own vigilance. That's absurd. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that, yeah, she's a, f- a four or five vigilant attacker for four that has flying is just so much. Yeah. I think this card is so, like you don't need to play other creatures. Yeah. But the fact that she mentors and puts counters on stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I, this card is so powerful. It blocks insanely well. On turn four, nothing blocks better. You know what I mean? Five toughness is huge. Yeah. Yeah. On turn four. Four power in the air on turn four is massive. Man, if you want to talk about not being able to block, if you, I mean, it's the form, everyone's sort of menace on their radar, but if you play Chain Whirler on three and then this, and you have a five power first strike trample. Is that well, a I just, curve? Is that good? Just five power first strike is already basically unblockable, and then you just got trample. Like, yeah, this and chain whirler. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then the next turn when it attacks, chain whirler becomes a four four. Yeah. Because a mentor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that seems fine. Huh. Right? Like, I. That's pretty good, right? Is green white knights the aggro deck, or is it just <laughs> red white mythics and rares? Yeah, I just think Aurelia is just because it, it's one of the. It's a card that is probably good in aggro. Good in mid range, you know what I mean. It just does it all. Like this card can block super well. Five toughness is just so much. Mm-hmm. It's so much damage in the air for four mana. Like I just think this card's insane. I'll be shocked if this card doesn't see a decent amount of play. Yeah, shock. I actually shocked. And I think it lines up pretty well with the removal in the format too. Again, reiterating that it's got five toughness. Like it only like Vraska's contempt answer it answers it at cost. That's fine. Um what other things answered efficiently. Like, I don't expect Bob the Plank to see that much play, and even that, like, you still get a trigger. Murder, probably fine, yeah. Like, you can just play, like, red-white mid-range, you know? You have, like, um, Baffling Ends, Chain Whirler, Rekindling Phoenix, this. There you go. There's, like, half the cards in your deck. Yeah. What more do you need? Just solid red-white mid-range cards that kind of answer most threats, no problem. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Lyra makes this bigger. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> it but makes it can, Lyra bigger it yeah. gives Lyra vigilance oh, man. wait does Lyra already have vigilance she does not yeah, flying yeah, first yeah. strike that's what it is sorry my bad yeah she gives Lyra vigilance and this gets lifelink oh, and if this is pumped by Lyra then it can make your chain ruler a 5-5 five, five. <laughs> I don't know how we're casting we'll figure out a way to cast chain ruler and Lyra but I'm sure we can get away with it it's gonna be tough uh, I mean well, people Boros already mana. people already cast chain ruler and ribbons like we have Sacred Foundry and Boros Garrison. Yeah. And uh Cliff Topper Treat. Cliff Topper Treat. Let's get it. It's a lot of tap. It's <laughs> a lot of tap lands. Yeah, but we're not casting anything till Chain Whirly. <laughs> Don't <laughs> need to cast anything. Yeah, exactly. Chain <laughs> a couple of whirly boys coming in hot. <laughs> well no, you just tap land, tap land shock, mountain chain whirler. <laughs> Easy. Got him. Got him. Figured it out. Yeah, yeah. I don't see a problem here. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> but uh no, nah, this card's just so powerful. Yep. Yeah. Very strong. I want to cast a lot of this card after I'm. I'm the thing is I'm over. not even gonna cast a lot of this card. <laughs> it's just not my style. Like this is just not a card I'll play in constructed. Like I'll lose to it a lot for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I just I'm not a red white guy, you know. It's not really a smart guy. 
Uh, to each their own. Yeah, you know, but I, I recognize game, recognize game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number one on this list: Night of Autumn. One green white, two one dryad knight. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. Put two plus one plus one counters on it. Destroy target, artifact, or enchantment, or you gain four life. How is this card a knight? Too? It's basically a yeah. planeswalker. Yeah. How is this card a knight? How does it cost three mana? How does it? How is it a four three? Why is it Rex Age plus? Why is or it? Or is it Kitchen Phoenix? Yes. It's just everything all in one card. So the reason this is number one is also just in modern. If you're playing green white, you just don't really have a reason not to play this card. Yeah. If Wait. you're playing green white in standard, you yeah kind of just play for play this card. Yeah. It does everything. Yep. It's a main board sideboard card that if they don't have enchantments artifacts, you're just playing a three mana four three, which is already fine. Seems fine to me. Or you can play a 2-1 that gains 4 versus the aggro decks. Yeah. Which is already good. That's fine to me. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> this card's nuts. Yeah, it's card's so good. so versatile. And and it's a knight that gets pumped by my history banalities that I'm playing with it. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah. This card's so good. Yeah. It kills my opponent's history of banalities. Oh. <laughs> oh, my Man. God. Yeah, it's just going to be. What look. doesn't this card do? And, and it like, kills the Conclave Tribunal yeah. card that we're talking about is one of the better removal spells in the format. So that's why I said, I'm not sure for sure. I said, depends on how the format lines up because if Night of Autumn is... I pre-ordered all, this card. Yeah, if it's played yeah, everywhere, I yeah. then, I mean, that, that, is that Conclave nuts. Tribunal playable? If this is just a four of in green white decks, probably not. I don't know. You can't. <laughs> yeah, but you're playing your own Night of Autumn's. To convoke out your Conclave Tribunal and blow up theirs. So it's, you know, probably a wash. You got to play Ixalan's Binding, actually, is what you got to do. And get, get their Night of get Autumn. Get their Night of Autumn first and then just go to work. There you go. Now we're already at the green two. You got to play Junk Knights, though. This is my... This is junk my, Knights? Yeah, because you want to splash for black spell, black cards, I think. Because Which green black wh- cards? Cyborg cards. Eldest Reborn and Duress. That's a main deck card. Eldest Reborn? Possibly, oh, but I'm talking like four in the 75. Come on. <laughs> Think I'm playing around. I'm trying to bring her back again. <laughs> Night of Autumn yeah, forever. For sure. Best season, best card in the set. Yeah, sign me up. I'm in. I'm in. Shorts and hoodie. That's what I'm about. That's what this card is. This is <laughs> wearing a hoodie, but still wearing shorts. This is that that season in a card. I'm about it. <laughs> it's just a feel-good moment. I get. I get it's the not fla- too hot. It's not too cold. It's just right. I get the flavor connection <laughs> between the shorts and the hoodie with the plus one, plus one counters mode and the destroy target enchantment or artifact mode. But what thematically in shorts and a hoodie is gain for life? You're going outside. You got a hoodie on. <laughs> oh, you're doing something. So you're gaining like a life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I get it. <laughs> not too hot in the summer. You don't you're have not to just stay inside. inside yeah. Just stay and play video games. <laughs> <laughs> you're out there getting work done. I was doing yard work this weekend. That's proof. Yeah, I was wearing shorts on hoodie at one point. It is almost autumn, so yeah, makes sense. Yeah, the card nuts though. Yeah. And like in modern, if you're playing a collected company, you just green white value deck, a la Todd Stevens style deck, right? Yeah, this card is just. I mean, you're not winning matches with that deck, but that deck does want this card. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, agreed. <laughs> yeah, hard agree. Card's yeah. sweet. It's, it's just cool. Good. It's cool seeing modal cards like this, and I like that this is something they've been doing recently. And it used to be that these were on charms. This is what we sort of expected for, like, you know, uh, Azorius Charm, those kind of style of cards that they didn't bring back. Mm-hmm. Knight of Autumn is sort of a Celestia Charm on a creature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that I, I sort of wish they would do this a cycle for every guild, like a creature that sort of did that. Had the multiple modes on it? Yeah, had the multiple choices, just like the charms. I think that would have been a really sweet design. They sort of Step. did it they, in the Guild Mages, but... Yeah, one of our honorable mentions is also... Yeah, I mean... Every, well, no, the Guild Mages always existed, though. Yeah. Like, Doesn't every guild in the set have a three-mana rare? Like, there's Charnel Troll and Golgari. There's yeah. Ionize and is it... Uh, Legion Thief, Warboss. Thief of Sanity in uh, the Yeah, no, I just meant I wish that they had the modal sort of charm... Yeah, charm Decisions, text, yeah. right? Of choose, choose whatever. Yeah. I think that's just a cool way to design a creature... So, I don't know. It's just a sweet design. It's a really powerful card. It's a cool card. It's flexible, unique. You know. Agree. Yeah, it's a sweet sweet. card. It's going to be great. And that's why it's number one. Yeah, it's just our favorite card probably. I couldn't believe it. We all just were like, wow, is this card real when we saw it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Obviously never attacking through a chain whaler, but hey, who is? (laughs) 
We had a bunch of honorable mentions too. Yeah, holy crap. There's, there's a, a lot. Bunch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Conclave Cat of the Year, the card I'm going <laughs> to cast on turn four after yeah, my Another one that you thought you're misreading when you look at it at first. I actually like, was just yelling before we started recording. I was like, wait, wait, wait. When, when this card was spoiled, I put it in like every chat I'm in. I'm like, this is this card nuts. You guys read this? I think in Limited, it's basically a mythic rare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Limited, this, it's so for people It's who an don't uncommon. Know, it's a white, white, green, green, costs four mana. And it's a four mana, four, four of vigilance. And when it dies, you make two, two, two knights. For some reason, you're uncommon for four mana makes eight power and eight toughness across multiple bodies. And it's a knight itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This card's nuts. Yeah, the card's really good. I don't think it's constructed playable, but... You don't think it's constructed playable? No, I'd rather play a Johnny on turn four over this, every, literally in every game. Why not both? Why can't I have them both in the same deck? Because I think there's probably also, also better four drops or even better three drops than this. Maybe. I mean, a Johnny is definitely better. For yeah. sure. Yeah, okay. But but I still want this card. All right. Probably. Yeah. I don't think you can fit four it four. in. You don't think so? No, four mana four four is not good enough. There's vigilance too. <laughs> it's but it, when it does, it makes I two will more things. say in limited, it's, it's busted out of control. So like not having flying obviously is sort of a downside when comparing it to Phoenix, but is this that much easier to kill than Phoenix? You have to exile it or it leaves around a similar amount of power. Like yeah, but not every single turn. Right, not every single turn, like, but it's it's powerful. It's an extremely powerful and common. But like, I it, think it might it's borderline constructive playable. Like, it's weaker than Phoenix, but it has that same feel of something that it's hard to deal with the front side of, or a similar threat comes back. Yeah, Phoenix does it more than once. I, but this entire so there's an entire what do they call it? Where there's like a set of them, a cycle. Yeah, there's an entire cycle of four mana double color guild creatures here. Yeah, and they're all nuts. Yeah. They're all crazy. I actually think that there's a chance Crackling Drake actually is constructed playable as well. I do think that card is constructed playable for it, sure. It's a four mana, I don't know, let's say you have four spells in your graveyard. So it's a four mana four four flyer that draws a card when it enters. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah, plays well with a jump start too. <laughs> Would you, wow, that card's that card nuts. Doesn't get dinged by graveyard hate. Right. Because it, it counts can be exiled too. Right. Like, is this card not. It's very good. I right. Think it's super good. I actually think this card is also I think this card is so sweet. I think it's actually one of the sweetest cards in the set. I'm just not sure is it has the support? I don't know. Hmm. Right? Like it's tough if is it has the support system, but this card is bonkers. Is this not like the mid game of the mid rangey Dream Eater deck? Yeah, maybe. Crackling Drake. Yeah. I mean you could play this in a bolus deck, so either either your four drop. <laughs> Either your four drop is you they discard a card or, or draw. I draw a card. Well. Your four drop creature, and then you just play Grixis when the mana is good enough. Maybe not now, but maybe when the Rakdos lands come out, right? I think Grixis mana would be pretty good. It's base red at the moment. Oh yeah, no, it's no base, base black, right? That's blue red and blue black. Okay, well, yeah, blue. whatever. I don't care. That's yeah, yeah. Like my point is that you know your early game is just removal, you know, mm. cast down, lightning strikes, whatever, and then your four dropper just. This guy and Bolas as a sort of air threats that just generate value. I don't. I don't know that that's good enough, but this card's actually quite good. Like a creature that that's has the potential to be a you know four mana four four that draws a card when it enters is. Yeah, agree. That's nuts. I maybe yeah. this card ends up being actually like a card that defines the format. I could see that. Could be. It's yeah. just powerful. Yeah. Oh, are you excited to lose in limited to Night Veil Predator? Four mana three three flying hexproof. Death touch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't Death wait. Touch. Can't wait to die. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's out of grim. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We got some cool cards. Like, Knife Concoct, you thought this card was like... Big. Yeah, we almost put this on our top 10 list. This one was real close to being on our top 10. Just because the Golgari... The Golgari cards lend themselves so well to like a reanimator style deck. And then this was the payoff. This was the powerful reanimation card. And that Concoct is... Costs five mana, uh, three blue, black... Sorcery, surveil three, then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah. That's exactly what these cool guard dogs wanted as a payoff. And the front side is also useful if you like don't have a good reanimation target in that connive is four mana to uh, Demir Demir. Gain control of target creature with power two or less. So it slows down aggro decks. It, yeah, it's usually not dead. Depends on what two drops are playable too. There might be some good value ones. Like who knows? Yeah. So yeah, no, I th- we thought this card was close. I don't know. 
It's kind of a little slow. It's a lot to invest. You have to you have to play three colors to play it. Um, yeah. uh, if you're playing like a Golgari, Golgari. deck, mm-hmm. that's probably no problem. Um, I don't know. I just like three colors is bug colors will be no problem. Yeah, I just uh, I don't know if I want to play this over uh, Eld- the Eldest Reborn. I know that's my that's my even, concern. I think even Journey to Eternity is like more playable than this. I, that's true. I actually think yeah. We I forgot we talked about Journey of Eternity last yeah. or Journey to Eternity or whatever last week. That card it probably is better than this. I think this card's interesting though. It's just this is going to depend on are there two drops I need to steal in some matchups or you know what I'm I mean? down to play this in a blue black okay. deck and bring back my Dream Eaters. I just want to point out though. For connive, right? Gain control of target creature with power two or less. Mm-hmm. What was our number two card on our top ten? I already forgot. <laughs> oh, Aurelia! It takes Aurelia. Holy yeah. moly! Yeah, it does. Yeah, and also like it, connive yeah. steals Aurelia. Yeah, that's if Aurelia decks are popular. They're, I mean, there might be a, a wide range of Aurelia decks, but in the early weeks, they're probably going to be aggressive. And in, against aggressive opponents, Journey to Eternity takes a long time to set up. Yeah. And you might fall too far behind trying to do this. Can whereas, I, um, yeah, Connive, like, slows them down. And then you can instantly, on turn five, have a reanimation spell active. Yep. Yeah, and Connive, uh... Connive also takes Legion's War Boss, the goblin that makes goblins every turn. Like, yeah, I mean, it's... If there's good two power creatures, which there are, then this card has the potential to do a lot. I'm interested. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's close. That's why I said it's almost on our list. It's close. I'm not entirely convinced. We had a few others on here though, which we already kind of mentioned. Uh, like the removal spells or necrotic wound, which is mm-hmm. if if graveyard deck creature decks are good, that card's absurd. Yeah. It's just a one mana exile. Like it's just yeah. insane. Like what do you need? Three creatures in your graveyard for the card to be very 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 good? Yeah, and then five for it to just be unbeatable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. card's okay. nuts. Uh, we also had the as we talked about the sort of uh, conclave tribunal. That card's very good. Yeah, uh, Deafening Clarion, the like weirdest design card, one of the weirdest design cards I've ever seen in my life. Is that the Wrath slash Lifelink thing? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it deals three damage to all creatures. Or. And give, or. And or give your creatures life. Yeah, it's a weird one. That card is has some potential in it, yeah. Yeah. I like. It's, I mean, that card's going to see play. It's an Anger of the Gods effect style. Yeah, you know? for sure. I just don't. Like having both those abilities on the same card is super weird. <laughs> well, you have an Aurelia in play, right? So <laughs> you cast it, you wrap oh, them, and then you give I, your guys lifelink and smash. You're right. I didn't think of that. This goes right into our red white mid range. And deck. your Cheney boy is a four four from having attacked the turn before with Aurelia. Yes. So you just plague win them and smash. <laughs> I don't game, understand how this is a question. <laughs> easy curve. <laughs> That's literally just exactly how we wrote it up. Okay. Someone at Wizards R and D was just like, "Yeah, exactly." <laughs> just listen to this podcast. That is exactly why it makes perfect that. sense. Yeah. <laughs> you damn straight. Out. <laughs> it out. Uh, yeah. No hot Verox is also on this list. The four mana six six hex proof green thing. That, yeah, That's you super just can't weird. cast non creature spells unless yeah. you pay two. Then you can. Yeah. Yeah. That card is interesting. Very interesting. I mean, six power on <clears throat> turn three off of Land of War Elves is uh it's a lot of power. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm interested. Um I I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, you have my attention. <laughs> like three minutes or uh, turn three six six. I'm listening. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm willing to believe this is good. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Any cool blowouts this week? We're over 60 minutes. Well, I mean, we, we kind of already happen. talked about the blow, which was LP get mangled by yeah. this oh, yeah. blue-white opponent bringing in Dispel to stop his nature's claim in case his blue-white opponent happened to have drawn Stony Silence, which he did, and he got ranged. <laughs> that was A+. plus. Yeah, that's pretty... Love somebody getting rattled. Yeah, that is a beating. Before we sign off, although I, the real thing is I got to find a way to make Gruesome Menagerie good. You know, bring back my pelt collector and something else. A two drop and a three drop. That's the tr- bring that's back the my pelt goal. collector. Bring back my knight of autumn. Bring back my uh, what's what's two mana we want to play in this? I time? mean, thorn lieutenant. Thorn lieutenant. Thorn lieutenant. Yeah. yeah, we can do that too. Merfolk branch walker. If you want to get some some uh, some pseudo surveil, some pseudo surveil. Yeah, bring back my close spore shaman. Oh, popping off! There you go. There's your three power and your knight of autumn's your two power. There you go. That's okay. now your pelt collector is a three three. Okay, so now the night. So for five mana, we get a three three, a three one, and a four three. Plus is that may- card good yet? <laughs> it might be good. I just think it's sweet. Mm-hmm. I just think it's a fun card. 
There's probably like some combo I'm not seeing with it, you know, like someone will find it. For sure. Maybe. The dream. I don't know. Who it, knows? It's something we'll to keep it. in mind because like it's one of those cards that limits that I think Watsi will keep in mind because it limits what they can print on one, two, and three CMC creatures in future sets while this is around. Thinking they won't miss a combo with it. <laughs> right. They're probably going to is my point. Yeah, for sure. I agree. I think yeah. it's just a cool brew card. I'm going to play around with it a lot. Yep. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Okay. Thank you all for joining the club this week. Make sure, as always, you check out wizardtower.com for all your magic single needs, mtgcanada.com for other great content, articles, podcast, Commander's Brew, great stuff there. If you want to support us, you can find us on Patreon, d- patreon.com slash DWC podcast. And however you listen to this cast, whether it's on Podbean, iTunes, any podcast app, leave us a review, rate it, rate it with, uh, rate the podcast, share it with your friends. Everything helps this podcast keep growing and bring it to new listeners. And yeah, we'll catch you all next week. Episode 100 next week. Let's get it. Oh yeah, we got to do something special for episode 100. Yeah, we'll discuss. We're still in the stay brainstorming tuned. phase. Yeah, stay tuned. Yeah. yeah.